introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is Scott Schuler. Scott is a tribal elder and member of the Upper Skagit Tribe of Skagit County and has been the policy representative for natural and cultural resources for the tribe since 1994. He's a descendant of the Pateas sub-chief of the Upper Skagit, who signed the Treaty of Point Elliott in the United States in 1855. Scott has fished, hunted, and gathered for the last 40 years, just as his ancestors did in the Upper Skagit. Currently, he is employed by the Upper Skagit Tribe as the policy representative for natural and cultural resources. He's been the lead negotiator for the tribe for fish and wildlife issues since 1994, and with hydropower relicensing on the Skagit since 2002. And Scott, whenever you're ready, go ahead and jump in. Good afternoon. Can you hear me fine? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yep. Thank you. First off, it's an honor to be mm -hmm. here, so thank you for inviting me. Um, I did get my bids in already, so I'm crossing my fingers to, to get a couple of nice, uh, the picture and uh, some of the other merchandise, so thank you. Uh, and um, um, I, you know, listening to a couple of the other speakers uh, who are amazing, uh, it's just uh, uh, astounding to me to to see how consistent you know many of the indigenous principles and values are. And Scott, and so, I hate to interrupt you, but I don't know if we can hear you. I don't have any sound on my end. We can, Justine. He's good. Yep. Can you can you mute yourself? Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Apologies for anything. Uh, technical i always have my difficulties uh and i did not prepare any slides oh, okay. so again apologies looks for like maybe that, it's but... just the video a little bit let me um go ahead and mute myself and maybe that'll help sorry no worries is that better can you hear me yes we can hear you scott right again uh, thank you well, let me talk a little bit about uh, the upper skagit our our people inhabited the Skagit Valley and the rugged North Cascade Mountains of Washington State for the last 10,000 years prior to contact by the area's first settlers in the early 1800s. During that pre-contact period, the ecosystem was complete with old growth forests. Our rivers were clean, they were full of salmon and all the terrestrial creatures from the top apex predators like the wolf and grizzly bears down to the smallest woodland mouse, mouse, mice, excuse me, were abundant. The millennia of coexistence with wolves ended soon after the settlement due to the habitat encroachment, hunting, trapping, or just lack of general tolerance of the creature's right to exist, which then broke the natural ecosystem order. In our tribal values, we teach our children that we have a hereditary obligation when possible, to restore, repair nature to a better state that we inherited in. As today, our generation is indeed borrowing from our kids and their kids in the future. We have always led by example by returning elk, fishers, to their historic habitats here in the Skagit County. You know, back in the early 2000s, we went to Mount St. Helens, you know, roughly 100 miles away from here and captured elk and had to bring them back forcibly to the Skagit to reintroduce the elk to their historic uh, habitat here in the Skagit. Uh, we cooperated with the Park Service and uh, Canada to bring back the fishers from Alberta uh, recently in the last 10 years. So it's in our history to, to do these types of actions. Uh, the, the tribe also helped bring back their nearly Baker extinct uh, uh, sockeye run, which went down to 80 fish in 1985. You know, I did look at the uh, the petition and signed it uh, for the uh, Snake River dams because we're very similar. We want to see our dams removed to eventually and restore the NIST system to a natural ecosystem. That's, you know, one of our core values. <clears throat> now, we're not discounting the fears or concerns that people may have in regards to having wolves in the natural environment. But, you know, we want people to understand that our position is that of a people like the wolf were once feared. And the con general consensus was that we needed to be removed from our ancestral areas. Fortunately for us, our people endured. And with that, endured the will to speak and act on behalf of the environment and all the creatures, of all of which have the right to, to exist. There are many challenges ahead for both us and the wolf, 
not to not the least of which is climate change, loss of habitat. But there is light on the horizon as wolves have recently returned to Skagit on their own for the first time since being eliminated over 100 years ago. Already, though, we are hearing the calls demanding the removal of the small pack, which is just trying to survive. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's important here is the wolves did this on their own. They're returning to their ancestral habitat areas be because of their will to survive. We didn't have to forcibly bring them back. It's our hope that they endure for future generations. Animals have always played a significant role in our history and our religious belief system. As Dokwabuth, the transformer, came to the Skagit Valley, made the valley safe for our people, gifted our people with the ability to communicate with wildlife. That's in our belief system. So we do have a value about all things in the nature, including wildlife, that are important to us and explain every aspect of our way of lives. If we do the right thing now and allow the wolf to survive, a part of our history, ultimately our culture, we will survive. We are better with a complete ecosystem. Wolf recovery is, wouldn't be possible here if not for the uh, efforts of our friends in Eastern Washington to help those packs survive. So, you know, we just wanted to share our perspective. It's, it's a very controversial issue here and it, as it is in most areas. But again, you know, our position is a position of a people of the landscape. And we feel that the, the wolves do belong here along with us on, and of course the grizzly bear too. So I know that's brief, uh, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. And, and if there is any questions, feel free. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, I did have a question. Um, question. Um, I was curious if you could talk a little bit more about, um, you talked a little bit about the transformer and how he cleared the land for your people. Is there, can you maybe talk a little bit more about yeah, some of the origin sure. stories and your relationship with the wolves and grizzlies? Sure. Um, most cultures, as we know, have an explanation of origin. And in our culture, uh, Dokobuth, I don't want to call him the supreme transformer, but the first transformer came here made the valley conditions right for our people, gifted us with the ability to uh, communicate with wildlife. And uh, grizzly bears, as an example, we coexisted with them and the wolves, and some of our uh, place names are associated with the animals up here. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, there are a couple yeah. questions coming in on the Q&A. We do have questions coming in. They're coming in, they're trickling in. Um, no uh, we have somebody who asked, um, I was wondering what tools the tribe has to advocate and conserve the newly known pack. That's a great question. And um, since the wolves did this on their own, we didn't have to forcibly uh, bring them here to Skagit County. We're using the, the most important tool that we can, our voice for wolf protection and uh, and uh, uh, wolf recovery advocacy. And I think that's our imp most important tool and education because, you know, a lot of the community, local communities here are raising concerns and, and have asked us to participate in removing these animals. And of course, uh, that's not in the cards for us. I mean, we might as well remove ourselves. Thank you. Well said. Um, we have another similar question. Um, we love seeing the wolves being reintroduced across the nation, particularly in Colorado right now, but it seems like it's almost impossible to get them through the killing fields of Wyoming and Montana and Idaho. Do you have any um, any insight or perspective on the the management of those states? You know, I unfortunately, I, I really don't have any insights on these other states and how they're managing. You know, all I know is that, you know, we're going to continue to uh, push for the preservation of this pack here and hopefully it'll, it will establish itself and and thrive because, you know, we want the pack to be here for our members to ultimately see and enjoy at some point. Uh, there's many things that our children haven't seen in their lifetime 
the different types of salmon and, and of course uh, uh, not seeing wolves until the recent the, the pack recently came here within the last 10 years so we have generations of upper Skagit people that have never seen a wolf so it's a really exciting time for us and uh, we just hope that uh, we continue on this path thank you that's really fascinating. And I'm glad to see that people are starting to see wolves as they move farther west from over. I'm over on the west side of Washington, and it really is nice to see them getting to move over into their, their native lands. Um, Thank you. I don't know if we have any more questions. Um, we have a question about coexisting. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of um, imagery that happens in our media about grizzlies and wolves attacking and killing people. Um, is Do you have any examples of how we can physically coexist better? And what are the roles of the media in promoting coexistence? Yeah, that's that's a great question. And, you know, inherently, there, you know, there's going to be dangers out there when when people and wildlife do interact. And uh, all I can say from our perspective, you know, after 10,000 years of coexistence with both the grizzly bear and wolf, um, our people survived. Uh, we didn't eradicate the wolves. We didn't eradicate the, the grizzly bear. So obviously it's about, from our perspective, it's about res respecting wildlife, giving them the space that they need and, and, uh, and you know, making sure that we take precautions and educate to protect ourselves too. Excellent, thank you. Um, I am not seeing any more questions, but we are very thankful for your time that you spent with us today and that you took time out of your day to come and give us some perspective um, from, from your point of view. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Have a good afternoon. You as well, Scott. Thank you.